Good morning, uh, Futex traders, and welcome to all of our members on the outside listening in, and welcome to this ladder replay session. So, what we're going to talk about today is probably uh, one of the sort of most important edges that day traders still have uh, at the moment, and it's what we like to call sort of a 95 probability trade, 95% probability trades. Now, what these trades are is, in effect, it's when a market uh, is sort of given a surprise. So, uh, it could be in the form of um, a deal that is reached when the markets are sensitive to some sort of a collapse. Uh, it could be sort of some sort of in, uh, you know intervention um, from maybe central banks or maybe a stimulus package from a government. Uh, or it can come in, and what we've seen most recently is a surprise from central banks. Now, the reason I'm doing the stream today. Um, because you often hear a lot of people talking about technicals versus fundamentals and there's no point in reading the newspaper and la 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 and, and I tend to beg to differ. I think you need to make sure you have a very good balance of both technical uh, sort of application as well as fundamental application and the reason is because if you understand the fundamentals over a period of say you know sort of a year you're probably going to get six to ten unique fundamental trade opportunities that if you understand the fundamentals you can then sort of work out uh, what sort of value there is in that trade uh, and trade accordingly and make money now recent examples would be for instance if you go back to last year uh, once the sort of fed started hiking and they created this divergence trade where they were a hiking central bank versus the rest of the world being a cutting uh, you know sort of uh, central banks uh, we got this divergence and the result was we had an 18 percent rally in the dollar now again at the start of this year uh, we had both uh, a, a very unique strong fundamental play in the gold um, whether that was because of a weaker dollar environment whether that was because of uh, you know the Fed shifting the gold posts in terms of um, you know allowing an overshoot in inflation these kind of opportunities present us with 95 percent probability trades now what I'm going to go through today with you effectively is the rules um, and, and these are I'm going to show you two examples of fast money 95 percent probability trades and how you would execute them you know as a day trade but then also maybe talk a little bit about some of the uh, the longer term 95% probability trades we, we could encounter for the rest of the year. So let's get straight into it. And the two examples I'm going to use is firstly the Chinese central bank surprise rate cut in April. Now the most important thing to gauge guys and this is where the key is is you have to assess how sensitive is a market to the news. In other words, for instance, if you go back to 2011, 2012, when we had the height of the European crisis, the markets were sensitive to any rhetoric surrounding Europe, surrounding Greece. So the moves were a lot more aggressive and they were a lot more volatile than what you would get, say, for instance, if, uh, you know, we, as for instance, we got a, a Greek deal overnight. So that's the first thing to understand is how sensitive is a market. More importantly, in the case of the Chinese central bank, how far down the line are we in terms of, of, of this rate cut cycle and, and how expected was this? In other words, if you go back sort of a year ago, rate cuts were kind of, you know, being spoken about. They weren't quite, uh, you know, the, the norm. Whereas a year later, it's kind of expected that, you know, because of the slowdown in China, um, because of the, the policy measures in place, China is going to continue on a, on a rate uh, cut cycle. So it's less sensitive and therefore the opportunity, it, whilst it exists and there's still uh, uh, money to be made, you're going to get far less than, say, a year ago. So that's the first thing to understand. So these are the two examples we're going to look at. Chinese Central Bank surprise rate cut from April this year. And then we're going to talk about the, or, or have a look at the ECB surprise bazooka package that they delivered in March. Now, the rules are, uh, I'm going to go through them first and then we'll go through the videos and then we can come back to the rules. So rule number one, hit hard, hit early. What I mean by that is once you hear the fundamental, once you hear that outlier, hit it hard. In other words, what I mean by hard is put whatever size you want to put on it initially don't try and pyramid into trades because what that does is you know as you're getting bigger into a trade if you start putting more and more size on as it's going further and further on side you're not used to that extra size so if you're hitting hard later on the minute that market maybe goes you know down a few ticks or against you a few ticks you're going to panic because your psychology is not used to that additional size so make sure you hit early and hit hard do not pyramid the second thing, watch out for time delay. And you're going to see this in the, uh, the ECB um, uh, video I'm going to show you. You're going to see how this trader almost panicked out of a trade because of that time delay. So make sure you understand that if you hear something, okay, you, you're probably ahead of, of most of the market, of most of the algorithm. So because of that, you need to have, be a little bit gutsy as to what you've heard. 
More important, never fade, guys. Never, ever even entertain uh, a fade. Why? Because it's paper in the market, there's flow in the market, there's panic in the market. Levels do not exist in these instances. So make sure you never fade those moves. Then, where do we get out? Well, it's very simple. We get out when we run into liquidity. In other words, if there's a buy side opportunity, we, we, we hold on to that long until such a point as someone effectively starts liquidating and selling because once you know that seller steps in, we're going to see a profit take move. So if you're not first out, you're going to be last out. And the last rule and the most important rule, and this was taught to me by uh, you know, one of the senior guys maybe two, three years ago was, once you've had the opportunity, bank it and walk away, guys. Remember, you're going to be making probably four, five, six times as much money in this single opportunity that you're going to make maybe in a day, in a week, in a month. So once you hit it hard and you make your money, step away, walk away from it. Just, just disappear. Go for a walk for the next two hours. Don't even care what happens next because you've banked. You're, you're out of the market. You've taken your winner. All right. Let and like I've said there, let the vultures fight over what, what's left. If you, I promise you, if you sit there and fight over it, you, you're going to do more damage, and you're just gonna you, you're gonna move sideways. So you, you're not gonna make much money, and you're not gonna lose much money. So you're best off bank it and walk away. So let's look at these trades and let's see what they look like. Now, the first one is the uh, China rate cut, which is uh, that one there. Okay. So what we're gonna look at here is the DAX on the right. And we're going to look at the euro stocks on the left. Now, if you go back a year ago, all right, traditionally what you would actually be looking to trade is the Australian dollar or the e-mini S&Ps because they'll move a lot further. And you'll see this in the case example that I'm going to show you. So it was just a normal, wonderful, sunny day. And the next thing, all of a sudden, uh, China announces that there's a 25 uh, basis point rate cut. Now, let's watch this DAX in particular and see what occurs in terms of the lifting. Okay, so bang, I'll tell you when it gets announced any second now. Okay, so out comes the announcement. All right, it's announced to the market. The algorithm's on it first. Remember that the algos have got executing power. So we can see the DAX has been lifted from 51s all the way to 60s. So 20 fat ticks. So what we need to be doing now is we need to be buying these 60s and likewise buying these 88s in the euro stock. So let's see what occurs if we bought, for instance, the 60s in the DAX. So we've bought our 60s. Remember, we've hit hard. We've hit early. Now what we want to do is we want to stay on this trade. Note where we get in is where we stop out in terms of risk. But equally, where we take profit is the point that we run into a seller. So let's see where that point comes in. And I'm just going to keep space barring this so I can move you up the page. So remember, we started at 50s. Come on. So we started at the 50s, and we're now trading at the 80s. Okay, we're trading at the 80s. And note now the two-way trade, guys. Note how this DAX starts flicking between 79s and 81. So watch the volume being absorbed between 79s and 81s. Okay, again. Okay, so unfortunately, we flicked over to the E-mini S&Ps there, guys. But if I showed you that DAX, if I go back a fraction, okay, you could see that as we got up to these 59.60s, we, oh, sorry, these 70s, we started running into a little bit of sell side action. So that's where you want to be exiting. You want to take those 40 hard ticks, exit the market when we run into that seller, and our risk remains where we enter. Okay, so that's the important, the guys, that's the trade. It, there, there's nothing special to it. There's nothing magical about it. There, there's no sort of hard secret about it. It's merely just executing on new information that the market has received. Okay, so let's do the same thing now because we can see the euro stocks. Let's, let's do the same thing in the euro stocks. Let's go back to these 84s and let's see how we could have executed. So let's watch this closely. So the news comes out and bang, we get 6, 7 lifted in the euro stocks. So we can buy the 8 here. We can click on the 88. Note how the market gives you a chance at the 88s. Okay, just ignore this short side obviously. Um, okay, so 88s and we lift straight up to 93s. So again, we want to run and we want to find out where does that first little bit of absorption come in. So we can see no absorption, no one selling yet. A little bit of a reloaded 94s. Okay, a little bit of a reloaded 94s, just bang, straight out. Okay, notice guys how 94s reloaded once, loaded twice, and suddenly someone sold the 93s. All right, and look at the result. The market instantly goes 92, 91, 90. Why? Because the algorithms enter first. The minute they run into any form of liquidity, they exit first. Okay, so if you're not exiting ahead of them, you're going to exit after them and you're going to pay down two or three prices. Now, the reason it's important to exit early rather than late is because, remember, if you're upping your size, in other words, if you traditionally trade, say, a two lot, 
and now you've gotten big in this trade, you've got eight lots on, four, you know, it's sort of four times your usual risk. Um, you, you need to remember that every tick is four times the usual amount, your, your sort of usual uh, earning power. So make sure you understand that concept, you know, graph that in over in your head. Every tick is important when you've got uh, sort of four times the kind of size on. So obviously this market is going to drift a little bit higher, but remember what I said to you guys, it's not so important what happens afterwards. We don't care. At the end of the day, our job is not to, you know, to sort of go and start discussing macro policy out of China. Our job is to take those five or six prices out of the market that they've gifted us, do it with a lot of size, and step away. Bank our winner, and let the vultures fight over the rest. Okay, if I showed you this, if I fast forwarded this a little bit, okay, obviously the euro stocks did move all the way to the 08, 09s, back to the high of the day. So again, if you're more of a technical type trader, there might have been a few technical areas as we were moving higher that's caused this move back up to the high of the day. Okay, so that's our first example, our China rate cut. Remember the market was far less sensitive. You know, if I showed you this video a year ago, that DAX probably would have easily done, you know, 50 full ticks, so say 100 hard ticks uh, in a very short space of time. So again, make sure you understand the sensitivity factor. So that is the Chinese rate cut. Let's move on then and have a look at the ECB. Now, bear in mind, let's cast our mind back to March. Obviously, there was, there was, there was an expectation for sort of a potential rate cut in March uh, and some form of sort of, uh, you know, dovish uh, additional stimulus, but there, there wasn't any expectation for, you know, for the bazooka, cut to the refi, cut to the depot, uh, you know, another Altiora and uh, as well as, a, a, you know, another commitment to quantitative easing. Uh, and obviously uh, corporate bond buying. So we, we received the bazooka against the expectation. Now we're going to look at the euro stocks again in this example and uh, obviously maybe have a look at uh, the German Bund. So again this is at 12.45. Notice how the market has thinned out and you are going to see a typical case of, of, of time delay here guys where the market you know wasn't expecting anything and it was a little bit slow to respond. So 12.45 the announcements come out. In other words, 12.45, they've cut the refi, they've cut the depot, uh, and uh, there's new measures being announced. So it's come out, and now suddenly we're hearing all sorts of headlines, and the market has been told that we are going to be buying corporate uh, bonds. Now, as you can see, the market started down at 44s. It blipped up on the news. Okay. And we can see, look how thin it is, guys. Notice the lack of liquidity in this market, all right? So one, yes, okay, you have to accept that you are trading in a much thinner market. But note, once the fundamental, once you understand that fundamental, what do we do? We hit hard, we hit early. And it's at this point that we're now going to find out that effectively uh, the bazooka has been laid out. Okay, so what we can see now is that there's still a lot of two-way trade. But once the market realizes what's come out, notice how aggressively it goes bid. So... Watch if we see any now. Note, guys, 1,600 contracts. Okay, this is very key. When you see this kind of liquidity being lifted in a fundamental, it's a very good sign. In other words, if someone lifts 1,600, it's telling you there's a very aggressive buyer in the market. I'm just going to scroll that down a little bit. Okay, note how the entire 1,600 got lifted, and no seller, and continuation, continuation again. Another 2,000 lots going to get lifted at fives. Okay, so at this point, remember what we said: we buy. And we stay in the position until such a point we run into liquidity. We have not run into a reload yet. Okay? Notice the reload on the bid, 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 the reload on the bid. So someone's constantly buying. Okay. Now we can see a little bit of profit taking coming in from the algorithms, yeah? So what do we do? Well, we take some profits too, guys. We take some profits too. Why? Because we don't want to be the last one out. However, you'll see the market then continues to extend. Another thousand lot lifted. And again, the market continues on higher. Okay, and again, a thousand lot comes into the market, and the market continues higher. Okay, so we've heard the news now. Corporate bond buying. Note, remember, we started at 40s. The markets received this news, and the market now will look to continue on higher. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit. We can see we got up to 84s, pulled back, up to 90s, up to double O's. Okay. So we had, all in all, a 60 tick move in a space of five minutes. Now, what you have to say to yourself with these outliers is 60 prices, if you make 10 of those or 15 or 20 of those prices 
on full size. What is that for one going to do to your day? What is it going to do to sort of how your week is panning out? What is it going to do for your month? What is it going to do for your career, guys? That is why these trades are so unique and so important because not only do they, do they give you sort of a very quick boost of money, but they give you sort of the confidence going forward. In other words, if I make four times my daily update, if I have my best ever update, what does that mean for my trading going forward? How am I going to progress going forward? How's my size going to increase going forward? There, there's so many wonderful positive things that come from executing one of these fundamental 95% uh, probability trades. So I want you to go and think about that today, guys. These, these trades do come up. They probably come around maybe 10, 12 times a year where, you know, as traders, we like to joke and call them free money trades because they are free money. We, we literally just have to be there for the opportunity and make sure we execute according to our rules. So, you know, if you are there for these, make sure you have a plan as to how you're going to execute, all right? And, and, and on that note, you know, keep reading the newspapers, guys. Keep, you know, interpreting what are the key fundamentals um, that are guiding the markets. Now, I said to you, I will talk about very briefly about one of the opportunities potentially late on this week. Now, on Friday, it's no secret, Fed's Yellen is coming out and she's going to be speaking right now. The market knows fine well that the other members of the Federal Reserve are not as important as Yellen for, for multiple reasons. One, Yellen is probably one of the more dovish members on the board, but more importantly, Yellen has the overriding vote. Okay, so if the market is going to be confident about the potential of a June or a July hike, all right, Fed's Yellen will need to come out and reiterate the stance of all the other members that have come from, you know, they have come out last week with their hawkish rhetoric. Now, the important thing to understand is where is the opportunity? Now, in terms of preparation, what you need to understand firstly is how is the market price? Well, right now we're looking at a 40% chance of a rate hike in June with say a roughly 50 to 60% chance of a rate hike in July. In other words, if Yellen comes out and tells us that June, July are live meetings, a bit like they mentioned in the statement in November last year, then the pricing for June, July needs to move from 40% to roughly 70 or 80%. So we can calculate that the, the, the markets, the US bond curve, you know, the stirs need to move approximately 30 to 40% if Yellen comes out and says that June and July are live meetings. So, there's an exactness to that, guys. So I know if I'm trading the euro dollars, I can probably hit the euro dollars for the for five basis points. I could probably hit the US twos, the US fives, the US tens uh, for say you know three quarters of a point or half a point. And if I know this, if I'm prepared for this, guys, all I have to do is be there when Yellen starts talking and execute according to my rules. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. Go away, think about it. You know, make sure you sort of add this opportunity to your arsenal because it, it, it is a hugely beneficial trade opportunity to make sure that you understand. All right, guys. If you've got any questions, you've obviously got me on uh, on Twitter. You know, feel free to tweet me. Otherwise, good luck for the rest of the trading session. If you haven't logged on to our new website and our new course coming, tradingwithedge.futexlive.com. Something amazing is coming, guys. Have a look there. Otherwise, good luck for the rest of the session, and we'll catch up again next week.